So I'm in a bar the other day, and this guy starts talking about his mom. He said, if, if my mom was here, she'd be... And I just stop, stop, stop. I said, never, ever talk about your mom, okay? It makes you sound like a mentally ill virgin. It makes you sound like Adam Lanza or something. So uh, this has inspired me to uh, discuss something that I've written about in the past called 10 Secrets to Conversation. I, I, I'm British. I come from a pub culture, and that's very talky. I find Americans aren't very talky. There's a, some problem with American conversations, and a lot of the time they're trying to get something out of you, like, oh, you went on that trip? What was it like? How much was it? It's, it's sort of like everyone is a consultant now. No, 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 no. That's not what a conversation is. A conversation is like a board game. It's like playing Monopoly, and you should sort of tool around with some thoughts and juggle them around and then have something at the end. It's not about you giving to me, okay? Rule number one, <clears throat> don't talk about your mother, okay? I don't want to hear that word ever out of your mouth. You're never going to get laid if you discuss your mother and your dad. I don't hear about your dad hasn't heard of, uh, doesn't know who Lady Gaga is or something. That's profoundly dull. Everyone has parents. Everyone's parents are clueless. Everyone's mom is the same. Shut up, okay? Number two, Stop saying like. Holy shit. When did this country turn into the Frank Zappa song, Valley Girls? This is getting embarrassing. And I'm not just talking about 19-year-old girls. I'm talking about men. I'm talking about millennials especially. But men in general, uh, humans in America and Canada, in the West, in Britain, they're like, like... And they used it to uh, punctuate sentences. I was walking in there and there wasn't even no one there. Like, or they just replace entire words. They'll go, so I was like, and he was like, and I say to them, you are a retard. You can say, I said, and half the time, by the way, when they use the word like, it's for something that is not similar to something. So there was like 10 people there. Just say there was 10 people there. Stop saying like, you sound like a valley girl. It's infuriating. I had to go up to someone in a restaurant and say, guys, stop talking like that. You sound like teenage girls. He threatened to fight me. Um, three, never ask what do you do? God, I have friends at local bars uh, near my house and I've no, I don't know if they have kids. I don't know their last name. You don't talk about what do you do? That's such an LA thing. It's super corny. Number four, astrology. This is what you do when someone says, when were you born? Uh, July. Oh, uh, Leo, right? You just go. Don't, there's no, there's no improving someone who believes in astrology. There's no working with it. They're just dead. As soon as they say that, they're dead. I don't care if you're a Nazi. I don't care if you're retarded. Everything I can work with, but astrology, no. Number five. Beer and politics don't mix. Sorry. One of the reasons we have the Proud Boys is here in New York, we never get to talk about Trump without starting a massive riot. So we have a, one time a month, we go to a bar and we all get together and we can just blah, barf all our Trump, immigration, build a wall, look at the Dow, real estate's fucking rocking, this is the best t time to be alive ever, freedom, constitution, blah, blah, blah. Otherwise, when you bring it up in a bar, it gets heated, and then people can't control their emotions because they're drunk. And the next thing you know, the next thing you know, someone's doing this thing with the fingers right like that, and it's gonna get violent. Which brings me to number six: keep it light. This is where the Brits really shine. They can do counterintuitive thinking. And they can take devil's advocate positions because they're good at conversation. It's fun for them to play around. Like with Roosh V, when he said, you know, if uh, women couldn't charge rape after they had invited someone to their home, they'd be a lot more careful about who they invited to their home. That's a dangerous, counterintuitive, weird thought to thought process. It's a thinking game. And he's right, by the way. But everyone took him so literally and assumed that he wants to advocate rape. He wants rape to be legal because they're not capable of playing a mind game. Here's a good one that a lot of Brits do. You say, would you rather be buried alive or drowned? That's an ideal conversation. Now, I like to go even kookier and dumber than that. Like, I still can't figure out how sewing machines work. I don't get how the thread goes down. And then how does it 
How do you loop it around on the other side and come back again? That's a fun thing to do in a bar. You sit down with a guy and you go, hey, you know that riddle about uh, where they bring seed over the thing and there's a fox and a chicken and you have to get them over the river? And then he can't really remember it either. And then you both piece it together, maybe even pull out a, a piece of paper, a napkin, and you figure out what the riddle was and then you answer the riddle. See? It's just like mind games. You're just, it's like Sudoku. Number seven, no technology allowed, no phones. God, I, I see these guys, the, when, when one guy goes to the bathroom, the other guy goes, oh good, I finally get to check my fucking Twitter. Keep your phone in your pocket. Even if you go, what's that place uh, at the bottom of Africa where whites are being murdered? Uh, uh, and you want to pull it out and pull up your maps, the reception sucks in this bar. It's going to slow down everything. It kills the conversation. Don't look it up. And this is especially true with old guys. Hey, oh, hey, dads, you can never remember anything. My dad will be having a conversation. He'll go, who was that guy? He was an actor. Uh, he was James Bond. His name was Sean. It was Shin. Uh, she. And I'm like, just make up a name and keep moving along with the story, please. You want to keep everything moving. It's like Little League Baseball. I always say to the kids, just swing. Stop being a, a snob and letting all these strikes go past you because they weren't in your wheelhouse. Just keep it going, kids. Swing, talk, and phones kill conversation. Uh, number eight, you only get two minutes to speak. So if your kids are taking music lessons or something, I don't know why you're talking about your kids. No one wants to hear about your kids. Stop showing the bartender pictures of your kids, by the way. She doesn't give a shit what college they go to. God, you're dull. But i am noticed someone will talk and they'll tell me like the whole history of their kids' music lessons until we're sort of done. And I know everything there is to know about their daughter's piano lessons. And I go, I shouldn't be an expert on that. You only have two minutes. So you talk for two minutes, this person talks for two minutes. You talk for two minutes, and that's the maximum. I'd like a few 10 seconders in there too, some funny quips and, and rude insults. Um, and that, I'll get back to that with, uh, with 10, but number nine is it's not about you. So, you may talk about yourself a little bit, but there's this tendency, especially in America, where someone will say, uh, there was a crazy thunderstorm yesterday, and they'll go, yeah, the worst thunderstorm I was ever in was uh, in Thailand, we're on vacation, and everything goes, well, what's, what, how does that reflect me? How, what's my contribution? Me, 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 me. And that's not fun for other people. They're not interviewing you, you're not Madonna. They don't care about your personal life. We should be talking about things external, to all of us and learning from it. And that brings me to number 10, which is the most important one. You should come to a conclusion. So say you come up with some dumb theory like, I bet you little brothers are better fighters generally than big brothers because they always got beat up by their big brothers. I bet if you researched it, then uh, you'd discover like the top MMA guys all had big brothers. And this is just a hunch, I just made that up right now. And then the other guy contributes and he goes, yeah, you know, I remember there was a, a, a Muhammad Ali had two older brothers, I don't know if that's true. And that goes around and around, and then you come to a conclusion, I think you're right, Gav, or I think you're wrong, Gav. It's what, ha the reason people end up being good fighters is they come from a dangerous area and they grow up fighting, it's nothing to do with siblings. There, we have a conclusion. So it's like we did this little research team and we come up to something, that, that's how it goes. You do your little two minutes, you come up with a dumb conclusion, and now you're smarter for it. That's what a conversation is. It's just a fun game, and it's not about you, and it's not about your fucking mom. Hey guys, thanks for watching. Please subscribe to Rebel Edge, where you can find all the videos that are exactly like this one, but different.